Hello everyone and welcome to High Plane Games. Simon here, hope you're well. And this is Triplicity, a weird mashup of puzzle games set in Monument Valley versus a really quick fire or quick paced tight uh, three versus three card game mechanic, which is where you collect cards in the game itself. Uh, there are different modes that you can play with. Can you spot the Monument Valley <laughs> references already? Uh, but what I'm going to do is just show you the two base game mechanics uh, so that you can see kind of how they all interweave with each other and how it all works because it's a really interesting game um, that's taken me a little while to get my head round the basic mechanics uh, to then show you quickly and conveniently how it works. Thanks for the developer for sending me across a copy to take a look at. Uh, it was in my wash, uh, wash list, my wish list anyway. So really pleased with that. So Triplicity is broken into different worlds and each world starts out with some kind of puzzle. So in the green zone that I just finished, which is your opening one, uh, you had to kind of move boxes around of different colours and get them into certain slots. Here, this one looks like it's going to be about putting blocks into places ah, red for fire, clearly, uh, so that things can actually I guess make sense properly I'm gonna yeah. yeah cause then you can't do anything so alright nah. there we go so yeah so you've got to just make sure that you get the right boxes in the right places and so you'll have like three or four of these before you then get up to a zen person uh, to do something oh this one's gonna confuse me i can tell already uh, i'm assuming we go two across so that we can then go down and then match yeah there we go uh, so these puzzle things are generally quite quick and easy-ish to get through and then what will happen is that will then spark something to then rise up from the ashes uh, and you'll get like three or four different kind of versions of these the puzzles aren't particularly like brain meltingly difficult but they change for each world that you go through so um this one's mirror type things the other ones that i've seen are painting of environment so that you've colored all the blocks in properly that kind of stuff and then you'll get a god deity that will appear i want to offer you a challenge uh, and you can then look at choosing your deck and i'm going to go for smithy green and that's primarily because i had more green cards than anything else and this takes you to the other really the main gist of this game which is a one versus one three card three card deck playing arena uh, I will, yeah, I will, I'll keep that deck for the starter. So it starts off with it flicking back and forth and deciding who's going to have the first go. I do find, in general, whoever gets to go first does have a bit of an advantage, um, probably more so than initially I'd like, because it seems to be that if I start or first, I usually can win. Uh, and when I fa start second, it's very rare that I can win. But I'm not very good at these games, so it's probably not really that kind of thing. Each card has a little diamond across the side here, which tells you how many essentially energy points that you can use per round. So you've got three, one, one. And we have three diamonds on the bottom that kind of dictate how much you can put onto the board per turn. 27 cards I've got left after these, except for these three. I've got 30 health and so does my opponent up on the top here. And you've got your playing deck in the middle. So what I'm going to do first off is I'm going to lay out a green card there and a blue card there. Now they just kind of match in terms of suits. Um, and when you place them down, you've got on the left hand side how much HP they can do in damage attacks. And then this is to two. And then you've got one for the amount of health that they have. So that's two damage, two health, five damage, five health. And once you've run out of points that you can put onto the board, your turn ends and it will flip to your opponent. who can then put stuff down. Of course, he has a triple fireball, which will ruin my 
wonderful thing. He also has something that's got quick attack, which meant that he could then do a, a, a full-on attack at me, essentially. Any space that doesn't have a card on, if someone can hit it, they can um, basically hit damage and cause you an issue with that. Um, and then that comes off of your health itself. Now, the crux with this game, because it is so tightly woven, is do you attack and try and clear off some damage or do you sacrifice what you have on the playing field for you to go on? So here, this guy can go and mark up ahead and do two damage. That takes that down there. So we kind of, we're playing catch up a wee bit. Um, now, this guy is only going to get two damage, but he's going to hit us back. But the kind of crux in the way how things work is that it's better for me to hit and lose the fox paw that rather than not attack and wait to be attacked. And the reason for this is that when you attack and die, because you will always get your counter attacked back no matter what you do, if you attack first, if they then kill you back and there's like more of their attack damage left, that doesn't come off your health. But if I attack and die um, from their attack, anything that is left over from their damage then comes off of your health. I hope that makes vague sense because it's the big crux, essentially, of this whole game um, in terms of what you then put out. So for me, what do I want to do? What do I want to do? Because I've got to, I've got two three cards that have come out at random, and the card the way that it comes out at random is really frustrating sometimes. Because you're like, ah, I've got all these good cards and I can't use them. Uh, so for me, it's better to leave that guy out because he does two damage. Because he's going to damage us anyway, and I'd rather come out and do this and get him out of the way. So let's go for this. Do that and nip him off. So that's a quick attack uh, straight off the bat as well. And so he was able to inflict two damage. This one also flies. Oh. So what I'm going to do, uh, that means that they can attack anything that they like. So I could attack that and kill it off. But what I'm actually going to do is it's more sense for me to just go straight in and do the six damage. Uh, I've got nothing left, so I need to end my turn. So, yes, we're going to lose a couple of damage this side, but that guy's going to die anyway. Ah, oh, he's got a shield. Damn it. That's a fireball there. Um, and for some reason, he didn't quick attack me. Never mind. Uh, right. So, let's try. Do you for you because that gets a minus two uh, because that shield just rebuffs whatever action that you get. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is bring you out there because that removes a point off of every one grey in terms of damage as well as anything else. And then that makes sense to put you there because not only has it got a shield, but he can't hit and will take off one of his health when we rebuff. So they'll kind of cancel each other out. And we'll end the turn there and continue on. So that removes his shield. They kind of cancel each other out. Ooh, a three. Oh, I've got another three and a two. Ugh. That's frustrating. Um, hmm. Yeah, so that's going to make me. Ugh. Let's get the Hulk Lops up because that's a powerful red imp, so we need to kind of. get rid of that and that's going to be okay because that he'll if he goes for an attack he'll just get killed anyway but at least that kind of sucked up as much damage as possible ah damn it 
<laughs> That's annoying. Um, right. But we're still winning. So let's see what we can do now. So again, we can only really put another one out. So that's that one gone for now. Um, what should we put out? Go for that for now. Aha! So that's the fireball trap thing. That's the first time I'd seen that as a thing. We could wind up not going very well here. Minus two, minus two. And another fireball and a fireball trap. Frustrating. Okay, so this has got a fireball too. Uh. We might as well do that to be fair because that will send up set off his well it stopped his fireball trap so that's all right <laughs> uh, and we actually do have another mm. 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 now i'm going to end my turn because i don't want that five to be lost Oh, a flying and a quick attack. Damn it, that's not gone well at all. Okay, what have we got now? So again, we're in trouble. Somewhat. Let's put that out. Ooh. I'll tell you what, this guy's got mega good, much better cards than I have. <laughs> okay, so again, this one's a juicy, so let's dive in here and do all that, I think. That's probably better. Ooh, that's going to hurt. As is that. <laughs> Okay, so for me, yeah, we are going to stick that in there. That can go across, that kills him off. Oh, it's a shame that we aren't able to do, we don't have any other flyings or first attacks, that kind of stuff. But with a bit of luck and someone a bit rubbish. So we are horrifically losing. But that, ooh, that could help. Hello. Um, that's my best card. <laughs> so immediately I'm going to dive in and do a that because that will give an overview of minus one, which comes off of him. Uh, yeah, let's do that because that gets another one off there. Uh, I'm also mega interested in getting something there, actually. Because yes, that gives me my life back, but it means that he's going to have to put in two things. Like, so he's put in the shield and then the fireball to try and get rid. That fireball goes there, that's fine. Uh, so... I'm quite happy to do a dink dink. That's going to take off six from there if I do a straight across, which makes more sense for me to do that. Uh, I'm then going to stick in this one here because that then bolsters everything up one and is quite chunky. So that gets rid of that guy's shield. That's fine. He's then lost two there and can only put in a three. So actually, this is going to work out really, really well. So before I kind of do anything, let me 
do that for lols. We'll put that in because that gives everyone a little bit of a boost. Grandiose. But actually we don't need it because whilst that's now got a number seven, this one's a flying one so we can dive straight in, strike a bullet to the heart and we get the victory. And that's how quickly a something can turn around. Now, regardless of whether you win or lose, you always get cards back. If you lose, you only get one. If you win, you get three. Um, so that's a flying and a triple um, thing for a, a plus one on our health for everything. That's a flying and inflict one straight across. We've got quite a few necro worms or whatever they're called. And so you continue on. Essentially, going through the levels will start to, and I bet this will show something slightly. Yeah, so look, this one's now an opposite one entirely. Oh, how did you get. Hmm. It's a good job we are ending this here. Oh, no, no, we're okay. Oh, no, we're not. <laughs> Well, no, actually, so yeah, you'd go to the middle and then off and then, yeah, sorry, my fault. But that's how you, this game continues. The further you go through the puzzles, the more generally you start to unlock in terms of actual uh, decent cards. And then what you do in order to deal with that is you go to your card library. You can create a new deck or you can look at your starting one. I'll bring up Smithy Green. So on the right hand side, you've got the cards that I've got in. So you've got some quick attacks, some shields. Non greys getting minus stuff. That was my soul dragon, the one that really, really helped with the six extra life and flying. And you're looking for, see, like Deathwing, quick attack, flying, and inflict two. I was hoping that that was going to uh, change my game, but it didn't pop out. But that support one did. Anything that's kind of gold round it is like super, super amazing. And so what you would do is work out what you want to stick in where, essentially. So. Um, but you need a difference between three stars, two star, a diamond, sorry, uh, and one diamond so that you've got the flexibility in what you bring out. And that's the beauty of Truplicity for me is that you have so much customization on your deck as you go along that you could potentially try and get loads and loads of really, really nifty one star cards and have three of them keep on going out. But then you'll need to dive in with a couple of three stars uh, or two star one stars to really kind of like start that pummeling attack through the more stuff that you get in that's a flyer or a shield or that can add stats as it goes along those kind of things will really help out your deck but they only really come from playing the story mode um and diving on from there so uh like i want that flyer in there so what i would do hmm probably get rid of that and then stick in that flyer we've got the other one that can gain two life i'm quite conscious as well that you want to have different things with uh, like only a few certain suits um so this one started off with all of my greens and i just filled it up with everything else but where the green ones have kind of uh not fallen apart but they're less exciting to me now um so like that's a four three three four it's worthwhile probably getting rid of that uh mucid worm and I'd like to get the rear wat in for it because because it's got a quick attack and the stats are almost identical. Um, is there a three two on a two? What's the other two that's in there? Oh, it's only that. So mm, potentially I'd get rid of one of the cliff breathers and get in maybe the spark root because it's got a quick attack, so it gets to go first and straight away goes in and dives in. So you'll be switching your stuff out as you go along and I really really like that uh, as a thing so I'd probably also yeah I'd get out that bone and get in the necrosal because that gets us another one star in um because you don't want all three stars because then you can only move one and if they stick in three then they're starting to hit you and yeah it, it gets difficult so you need a little bit of everything. And and that's essentially why I really recommend Triplicity because it's got that 
real um, balance and depth in the gameplay that it's got. So if I go, okay, let's go to take a look at the options now. Uh, so you do have some achievements. You can see that you've got different challenges that you've got there as well, different secrets, and then you can go basically to playing with tournaments um, and so on and so forth. Uh, so that you don't need to do this puzzle game if you don't want to, which is perfectly fine. And that is Triplicity. If I dive into there, uh, this is tournament mode. And you can enter a tournament lobby. And here's where you can go and play online. Uh, I've personally not um, played online with anyone yet. The game is very, very new. I'm sure that it will pick up a small cult following uh, because I've seen a lot of people talk, uh, well, a few people talk very, very positively about this. So I'm sure it will get a little cult following as it goes along. But as you can see, you can do standard tournaments uh, where you play with your own deck or um, you can create a deck specifically for a draft tournament where you go and do your own little thing there. So, yeah. You can play online with others, up to eight people at the same time. So, that is Triplicity. Thank you very much for watching. I do highly recommend it. Um, it's a nifty little mer merge up of different puzzle genres. Uh, but it's particularly the card game that I think will engross people the most. Take care. Bye for now. This channel is just one of my many projects that cover games, music and film. If you enjoy any of these and would consider supporting me to develop further in the future, you can do so by visiting patreon.com forward slash Thank you for your time and for watching the video.